Up next, we'll have the team from the University of Florida, uh, Gator, oh, sorry, the University of Missouri, <laughs> uh, Team UMKC, uh, presenting on permeable concrete and water storage management. Uh, Mr. Andrew Roberts, Andrew Ramsey, and Ryan Holmes, and their mentor is Mr. Leonard Barreras. Good morning. I'm Andy Roberts with Team UMKC, University of Missouri, Kansas City. With me are my other members of the team, uh, Ryan Holmes and AJ Ramsey. We'll be speaking today on our feasibility study of Barracoa as a potential sponge city. Sponge cities were pioneered in 2013 with the conceptualization by Chinese President Xi Jinping. And today, China continues to lead the investment in, in research and design of sponge cities for stormwater mitigation and water supply integration. Some of the benefits of the sponge city include water, <coughs> stormwater integration and mitigation, groundwater recharge, mitigating urban heat island effect, creating a cooler pavement city as the city grows, and improving civil infrastructure, all entertaining the tenets of environmentally conscious design. The Sponge City is achieved chiefly through a network of permeable pavements. AJ will now proceed to tell you what that technology entails. Our proposal included permeable pavement or permeable concrete as the core infrastructure to our Sponge City design. Permeable concrete is similar to conventional concrete, except it allows water to infiltrate into its pore structure. By removing sand and limiting the amount of cementitious material, permeable concrete typically has a void content of 20%. We can design roads, sidewalks, and parking lots using permeable concrete to mitigate and convey stormwater runoff. Now, here's where it gets interesting. As research is developing and permeable, permeable concrete is becoming more widely used, we're seeing how it is effective at removing pollutants from stormwater systems. In fact, Ryan Holmes and I have graduate research studies with the permeable concrete in the removal of heavy metals, arsenic, nitrates, and phosphates. Ryan recently published a peer-reviewed paper demonstrating how permeable concrete could remove 90% or greater of heavy metals through physiochemical processes like absorption. We would like to implement this technology in Baracoa, Cuba. Baracoa is a coastal city in eastern Cuba with approximate population of 81,000 people. To our knowledge, water is collected through local river systems and only available at intermittent times during the day. It is then stored in individual storage tanks or cisterns on roofs. Inconsistent water supplies demonstrates the need to find a solution that supplies supplementary water to the citizens of Baracoa. Additionally, as storm events increase in intensity and frequency, stormwater mitigation techniques must be advanced. Unfortunately, we've seen the worst of this with the recent Hurricane Matthew that devastated many cities in this region just last October. Baracoa faced extreme damages due to this Category 4 storm with its high winds, intense rains, and storm surges. Despite this tragedy, it presents the opportunity to improve the existing infrastructure in Baracoa. We see Baracoa representative of the many other cities in Cuba, and we would like to we see the potential for this to be used as a pilot city for future sponge city designs. And here's where the methodology begins. We first needed to find the total volume of rainfall runoff that could be captured by a permeable pavement system. 
Using ArcGIS and shuttle radar topography, we were able to delineate a watershed and determine a 2.5 square kilometer drainage area into central Baracoa. With limited rainfall data for Baracoa, we used yearly average rainfall from Havana, Cuba of approximately 1,200 millimeters per year. This equated to approximately 100 millimeters per month with an average rainfall event 15 to 20 times out of the month. We use these average rainfall events to determine the total storage volume for daily usage. We also considered a five-year and 100-year storm based on Miami, Florida data due to its proximity and similar uh, geographical conditions. Considering these more intense events, we ensured that the permeable pavement system could convey this water, reducing flood events in Baracoa. By making assumptions to what percentage would come off of the drainage area into Baracoa, we could determine how much rainwater could be stored and mitigated with our permeable pavement system. I'll now hand it off to Ryan, who will discuss our area of interest and design in further detail. Here we have the example, or the central of the city, um, basically delineated into eight different categories. At the center, there's the historic district, which is highlighted in red, and will remain largely undisturbed during the implementation of any sponge city design as to uh, preserve the historical qualities of the city. The rest of the city is highlighted in various colors of green and gray, going from dark green, which would be something like a permeable uh, uh, land, like grassy, uh, grassy field or um, open, open lot, to something more like a parking lot, which is highlighted in dark gray. We would have a total, we have a total average area of approximately one square kilometer of impervious land in this area, and that and a total length of uh, linear length of 26 kilometers, that being those um, highest priority roads and uh, um, arterial uh, lanes that would help be converted. And these are the targeted ones, for example, the one you see on the left. Here we have an example of the design. Uh, basic pervious concrete design is approximately six inches of pervious concrete followed by a sub-base of six to 12 inches of aggregate that goes into an underdrain. This underdrain will then channelize the water into the groundwater, uh, especially for the initial uh, flow event, uh, initial rain event, and then uh, the rest of the water would then go into a local cistern. Um, we would need approximately uh, 38,000 of total, 38,000 liters of total cistern volume f to supply 30,000 people with approximately 190 liters per day. The additional water, if in the case of like a five or hundred year storm would then be channelized to either rivers or uh, into the ocean. Here we have a preliminary cost evaluation. So these are based off the most recent values of um, United, States, United States cost analysis and it uh, entails approximately uh, $30 million for the project. This is divided into primarily two sections. Two thirds of that is in the materials and um, construction costs, the other third in the pipes, cisterns, and maintenance. Here on our left, we show that there's a truck that would be used as a sort of a vacuum cleaner to preserve the quality of the pavement over the, life over the lifespan of the insulation, which is approximately 20 or 30 years. The cost overall, it may be very large, but to compare it to existing systems, we're providing two things. We're, one, we have infrastructure. Two, we're also cleaning the water. Cleaning costs are typically for something like activated carbon are approximately 25 cents for every gallon treated. Our system provides it for almost two tenths of a penny for one gallon of treated water, which is significantly less. As we look forward into the next steps and uh, uh, into implementation and, and what that will entail, we'll need to further evaluate the storm surge events, such as how, saliniz how salinization will affect the, wa the system, as well as will there need to be any flushing of the, of the permeable pavement. Additionally, we'll need to look at what happens at the, as those wire levels rise, will there be detriment to the off outflow. Uh, additionally, we'll need to evaluate more uh, 
in-depth analysis of the material costs and evaluate if we can reduce the cost overall by trying to integrate it with the existing infrastructure, such as the cisterns on the tops of the homes or any additional or any pipe system currently available. Lastly, we'll need to evaluate the water quality to, to look at, uh, first of all, what is the existing water quality, and then to look at how this will improve it, as our research is showing that this is potentially drinkable water. So we want to see about the serviceability and serviceability limits. Similarly, there's going to be the ability to take that water into the groundwater and push back the saltwater intrusion, which is obviously a problem on the coast. We'll be interested in investigating uh, how we can preserve that, and that is part of the uh, uh, water quality measures that we'll need to investigate. In conclusion, Barraco provides us a great opportunity for reconstruction. It gives us an excellent place for pilots as a pilot city to demonstrate the capacity for sponge cities as a, uh, a way to mitigate flood events as well as preserve, uh, preserve the land, provide clean water and water storage, and also give it, um, give it infrastructure such that it's both environmentally friendly and beneficial to the people. That concludes our presentation on Barracoa, Cuba as a potential sponge city. We'd like to acknowledge several people, um, specifically Leonard, Leonard Barrera, our team mentor. Um, also, Delita Teresa Pupo Berrios. She's a local Cuban native living in Kansas City that we located early on when we were looking for a mentor. Her uh, grandfather actually is a former professor of chemistry in Barracoa, so we, were, we, we got to go over and sip Cuban coffee and we enjoyed that. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to thank Dr. John Kevin for being our faculty team advisor uh, down there at UMKC. We'd like to thank the School of Engineering and Computing and the School of Graduate St Studies that made in part our travel and presentation here possible today. And lastly, we'd like to thank the Cuban American Association of Civil Engineers as well as the Association of Cuban American Enge Engineers for making this possible. We're honored and grateful. <laughs>